As far as we know, there are no life forms there. But what if we need to terraform someplace else? Some futurists think option B might be Jupiter's moon, Europa. Why? Because it looks like it could be covered in water, and water means the possibility of life. It's like another world. When you come from the UK or some other green nation, you land at that airfield amongst the lava and the cinders. I've never been anywhere quite like it before. In the 1830s, Charles Darwin visited Ascension on his voyage around the world on the Beagle. It was very young, lots of barren volcanic lava flows. There was no natural running fresh water. When Darwin arrived, Ascension Island might as well have been Mars. He could breathe air there, but there was no edible food and no fresh water. It was not habitable for humans in the long term. Obviously, when Darwin visited, this issue of trying to get water and get food was the chief concern of the time for the military that were based here. Darwin would have seen that himself. And after he returned to the UK, the idea of vegetating Green Mountain to try and increase the water supply was gradually put together with his great friend, Joseph Hooker, who later became the director of the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew. And over the latter part of the 19th century, they began bringing in hundreds of species of plants to vegetate the island. Darwin and Hooker sent a Noah's Ark of plants and trees chosen to transform the island and to create fresh water. And we'll have to send a similar care package in order to terraform a place like Mars. Some species were brought in to create pasture for cows uh, and sheep. Other species were brought in as windbreaks. And some, like this huge ficus tree we can see behind us, were brought in to strip the moisture out of these mists blowing across the mountain, um, which is dripping down on us now, and uh, increase the water supply in the wells that they dug. After two centuries, Ascension Island has been transformed, and Darwin and Hooker's attempt at proto-terraforming the island for humans was a success. But we can't ignore the flip side of terraforming a barren rock with its own native ecology. Well, this area where we are now in, in the mid-elevation regions would have been incredibly barren when, when Hooker and Darwin first visited the island. Um, much of the low-lying plain around, around coastal regions were covered in um, lava and ash fields. The introductions that Darwin and Hooker and others carried out fundamentally changed the ecology of Ascension Island. Introduced species by their nature, they, they lack the normal controls that would keep them in check in their native habitat. So once they arrive, they often run amok um, and can't exist in balance with the ecosystems they invade. On Mars or Ascension or anywhere, really, when you change an ecosystem, there will be winners and losers. On Ascension, humans made the island livable, but at the expense of the natural habitat. Hooker knew what the consequences of his actions were likely to be, but Hooker obviously made a value judgment at that time. Securing water or food was far more important than any kind of modern conservation imperative, so he pressed ahead. It's always going to be a problem when, when, when people's needs come into conflict with wildlife. What's the extinction of a few plants compared with the extinction of humanity, right? Well, not really. That's too short-sighted. What creature was eating those ferns? And what predator was eating the creature that was eating those ferns? Will they all go extinct? And in the end, will those extinctions lead to our own? This likely won't be a problem on Mars. As far as we know, there are no life forms there. But what if we need to terraform someplace else? Some futurists think option B might be Jupiter's moon, Europa. Why? Because it looks like it could be covered in water, and water means the possibility of life. Eva's scientific colleagues are getting ready to set up a colony there and they're putting the hard sell on her to join them. If Europa is incubating life in its waters, shouldn't Eva, a geneticist by trade, be rushing to work there? Well, why not just port there? It's not exactly welcoming to biological life, well, apart from the biological forms in its oceans. Exactly. This is a geneticist's dream. This is the only other non-terrestrial life we found in our galaxy so far. We've been fantasizing about this for decades. What about 
the radiation on Europa and the temperatures. We're not saying there aren't risks. We're saying it's worth it. I need to be here. We'll call you when we get there. <laughs>